most of the free desktop projects, and especially most of the major ones, are developed on the free desktop GitLab. There are a couple of exceptions, things like Flatpak, but they're basically just the exception. Now you might be wondering, well, what is actually developed under the free desktop banner? Well, things like Mesa, Xorg, Wayland, Pulse Audio, Pipewire, Novo, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Basically, free desktop is effectively the backbone to make the Linux desktop run. But earlier this week, all of that vanished for about 24 or so hours. Not just Wayland, not just Xorg, not just Pipewire. The entire free desktop GitLab vanished off the face of the planet. This led to a little bit of chatter over on the Xorg Devel mailing list, and also a bit of chatter in the IRC for free desktop. And that's what we're going to be talking about mainly today. And the cause of this whole problem is something very simple. A problem that can happen to anybody out there, especially when you're managing data at scale. And it's not necessarily a problem with the way they were running things. They had two SSDs die basically at the exact same time. And this caused their Ceph storage cluster basically to freak out and have no idea what's going on. Ceph is basically a bit of software made by Red Hat for managing all of these drives and actually using them in an effective way. This storage cluster is what was managing all of the data actually being stored on the GitLab, you know, all the Git repositories and things like that. Now, counterintuitively, the two SSDs being dead weren't actually the main problem. It's really easy to replace drives, and that should get everything basically working again. The main problem was the storage cluster itself. So what they realized is the OSDs, which are object storage daemons, were not acting the way they should be. So an OSD basically handles the reading and writing of data inside the Ceph storage cluster. OSD0, which was a part of server 3, was completely dead. It wasn't responding to commands, it just didn't want to do anything. OSD14 was in an unhealthy state, it still functioned, but it wasn't functioning at its full capacity. This belonged to Large 5. And then all of the other OSDs were basically complaining about a state called backfill full, which effectively means that there's no free drive space, and it's a protection put in place to stop you from writing data to a drive that's full. Basically, the drive itself is full, the queue to write the data is full, and therefore, backfill full. Now, the two main guys in the IRC who were working on this were Daniels and Bentis, and initially they started working on OSD0, and the plan for that was simple. Get rid of the OSD, restart the disk, remove the OSD from the deployment, and then do an operator restart. Server 3 didn't want to respond to any commands. So they decided, you know what? Let's just, let's just skip step one. Let's not get rid of the OSD. Let's just do a restart and see what happens. So restarting the disk is also known as zapping the disk. And there's a great quote from the IRC. Oh boy, zapping the disk while the OSD was still known in the cluster was a bad idea. Not bad in terms of we are doomed, but bad in terms of now we need to clean up the mess. So that wasn't exactly the best plan to take. But here's the thing. The reason why they're willing to take a risk with server three is because prior to this point, they don't know why. There was nothing on it. Server 3, completely empty. It should have data on it, but for some reason, it just didn't. So, okay, new plan. Since it seems to be empty and we're not going to lose anything, we do this anyway. How about we just nuke server 3 and then replace it with a new server? Okay, cool. Nuked it and the new server doesn't work. So, it can't find the root and it will not start. So now to start cycling through different distros to see if anything is going to work. At some point during that process, a third OSD came down, but look, it can't get any worse from this point. The main problem here, though, is Daniels and Bentus, you know, want to go to sleep at some point, and it was a bit past 11 p.m. One of them needed to get up to take their kids to school the next day, so basically they just left it there and started working on around... 7.30 or so the next morning. And that wasn't foreshadowing before. From then on, basically, everything went as smoothly as it can go when you're dealing with a storage cluster that does not work. 
early the next morning, they finally got server 3 back online, and then shortly after that, they dealt with the problems over on large 5 as well. From then, they basically just had a broken OSD floating around, but at least the disc was back online. From there, nothing really that exciting happened. They had to wait for the Ceph cluster to actually settle, deal with all of the backfill full, bring the new server into the cluster, and let it just do everything it needs to do internally. Once all that was dealt with, they cleaned up the OSD, and then 24 hours after the original outage, everything finally came back online. And if you go to the Wayland GitLab or any of the other free desktop projects, you'll see that everything is working like it should. You can pull down the code, you can make issues, you can do everything that you could normally do on a GitLab. Now, outside of the IRC, I don't believe an official statement about this was ever actually posted. I don't know what free desktop practices involving this actually are. I know they do have an announcement mailing list, but it hasn't been used in like seven years. So I don't know if anyone's, you know, actually subscribed to it, but you'd expect there to be some sort of announcement on maybe some of the major projects mailing lists or something like that. But regardless, Daniel did reply to someone over on the Exorg Deville mailing list explaining basically what's going on. Yes, that's what's happening, referring to things basically being broken, our multi-host replicated etc. Ceph storage setup has entered a degraded mode due to the loss of a couple of disks. And most importantly, no data has been lost. But the cluster is currently unhappy. I believe this was about six hours before things were actually fixed. We're walking through fixing this, but have bumped into some other issues since, including a newly flaking network setup and changes since we last provisioned a new storage host. I'm guessing things have been updated since they originally worked on this, so what they knew back then may not 100% apply to the way the system works nowadays. But let's just assume that data actually was lost. The nice thing about Free Desktop is Free Desktop is incredibly popular. Basically, every distro out there is going to have most if not all free desktop packages. So assuming that all of the Git repo was lost, at least the code wouldn't be. All of the code is backed up on Ubuntu, on Arch, on Debian, on Fedora, on everything else out there. So that would still be safe, let alone the copies that individual developers would have as well. I know that distros like Arch and Debian ship binaries to the users, but it's very likely the maintainers of those individual packages would still have the source code locally on their system, maybe not just a tar GZ, maybe even the entire Git repo as well. Source code was never really a concern with data loss, but this was still a really big deal for Free Desktop because with all of the development being done around the Free Desktop GitLab, unless you knew what you're working on locally, development just stopped for a day. Like, nothing was going to get done. The issue tracker, it's on the GitLab, so you can't see the issue tracker. You can't report stuff to it, you can't read it, none of that's going to happen. If you didn't have a local copy of the code, you couldn't pull down any code. If you need to push up any changes, wasn't going to happen as well. If you wanted to look at any documentation for a project, this is something that actually got in my way. I was planning out a video for Wire Plumber yesterday, and Wire Plumber is under the free desktop banner with all of its documentation being on the Wire Plumber wiki on the free desktop GitLab. So none of that was visible. Luckily, an older version of the page was archived on the Wayback machine, so I still managed to get something usable, but I didn't have the entire wiki archive, so like it was really hit and miss on what I could actually see. Let's just assume that data was lost. The Git repos are easy enough to recover. The issue trackers are very likely not backed up by a third party, Maybe the wikis are, but in a lot of cases, I really doubt it. And maybe if they are, they might be older versions. If you have any like CI and CD stuff set up with GitLab, none of that would be backed up. So losing data would have been a really big deal. And it's really good that it didn't happen. Now, one of the good things about the way that most Linux package managers handle packaging is they don't pull directly from the developer's source code. So if you wanted to download something like Xorg or Pipewire while this outage was occurring, you could still do so if you're on something like, you know, Arch, Debian, Fedora, pretty much 
anything out there because they maintain their own versions of this, which may not line up perfectly with the Git repo, but it does mean that it's not affected by these outages. With one really notable exception being the AUR, because the AUR isn't really a package repository, it's more like a collection of build scripts. And these build scripts typically will just pull the source code from wherever the source comes from. So all of those packages related to free desktop projects would not have worked yesterday. Now, a few important things didn't come down because free desktop knows how to manage things well, unlike me. So things like the main free desktop website and all of the free desktop project sites, which were on the free desktop domain, but not a part of the GitLab, are hosted separately. So when the GitLab goes down, all of that stuff still works like it should. Unlike the way that I host stuff, where I put everything into one location, so if that server comes down, it just doesn't work. So let me know, were you affected by the outage or had no idea it was going on? And if you were affected, let me know, were you a developer? Were you just a regular user trying to get some documentation? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm gonna go and like the video. If you really like the video and you wanna become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Barrow Pay link down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a T. I've got a gaming channel, Brody Robinson Plays. That's gonna be it for me and I'm out.